All right. Maybe nothing goes in D, except for, of course, calm overflow. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. So I made a class tier list on stream this week. The list is mostly based on my own experiences with all the classes. Most of this video, I go through each class engraving, decide which tier I think it belongs in, and usually describe why. At the end of the video, I do go back with my final thoughts on all the builds and why they are where they are. I'll timestamp that part for you. So this is going to be our first ever Lost Ark build tier list. Class engraving tier list. First one I'm going to do is the if you are a very good player tier list okay this is the potential tier list this is the high ceiling only gamers if you're new or your dog or you have fucking toes for fingers skip this part <laughs> turn the stream off you don't need this Okay, so we're going to start by putting the obvious S tier classes in S tier. Knight's Edge, obviously S tier. Absolutely, without a doubt, S tier. Surge, S tier. Without a fucking doubt, absolutely S tier. Wait, what the fuck is this? Oh, that's Drizzle. That's Drizzle. Right, 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 right. I, I, I saw the umbrella. I was like, what the fuck is this? That's the umbrella. I see it. That's Drizzle. Um, okay. Forget Drizzle. Not S tier. Um, Hunger? S tier. Hunger with hands? S tier. Easy. Now Lunar on the other hand. Now Lunar on the other hand. Nah, it's still good. I'm putting it in A tier. It's not quite all the way up there, but it's still fucking good. <laughs> Put it in S! No, I can't do it. Not putting it in S. Can't do it. Um, alright. Let's see. What else is in here? Master Summoner? Oh, absolutely, obviously, without a doubt, D tier. Um, I actually don't even know what some of these are still. ESO War Dancer. Okay, I, I don't think I've seen an ESO War Dancer that has completely blown me away yet. I have yet to see a ESO War Dancer completely fucking blow me away. However, I haven't played with a ton. So, I, I don't want to put it in S tier because I... I feel like if it was S tier, I would know that it's S tier at this point. So I'm going to stick it down here. I think if you're really fucking good at this class, you're definitely competing with the big boys. But I don't think I, I just don't. Yeah, I just don't think I have. I just don't think I have enough experience with them yet to, to throw it in, in S. So <laughs> F tier. Um, okay. AT Scouter. I think I have to put AT Scouter in B. I think I have to put it in B. Mostly because, again, I haven't seen enough of them to know for sure that it's as good as it probably can be. I really just, I don't, I don't know what the ceiling potential is on this class because I feel like the only time I've ever played with an AT Scouter has been in content that they were incredibly overgeared for. So I'm going to stick this one in B for now. I'm sticking it in B for now. Um... Okay, Blessed Aura, Paladin, obviously S tier. Paladins have so much potential for fucking utility like crazy right now. Um, they're just, I think Paladins just, and on top of that, it's like so hard to be useless on Paladin. I, I really, I just, I think it's so fucking hard to be useless on Paladin. Um, now that being said... I do think bards have the potential to be up there as well. Minus the fact that they don't have any cleanses. But I guess if you're good enough at bard, you're bringing sacred charms and cleansing when you need to. When you absolutely need to. And then they've got the block on their skill. They can block the debuff. If we're, if we're just talking about damage buffs, then bard is, is better than paladin, yes. Absolutely. Um, at least higher potential. If you're talking about healing potential, yeah, Bard's probably also better. I I, I think it's got to go up there. It's it's There's some things that it's obviously better at, but then there's some things that it's worse at. But I think overall, it's just it's just too good of a class to not stick in S tier. Um, it obviously is only, you know, there's only three supports and they're probably all going to go up there um, because I'm... I'm <laughs> 
I, 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 we just, you know, we just gotta, we just gotta give them. <laughs> we just, we just gotta, we just gotta call, call a spade a spade at this point and just, you know, there's, there's no support. Unless, of course, you're playing fucking blue gun lancer support, in which case, get that shit out of here. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just gonna, we'll just go ahead and we'll throw artists up there at the same time right now. I want some commentary on why. On artist? S tier? Okay, so some fights, the ability that artists have to both heal and damage buff at the same time, basically. Right? Like, with a bard, you have to pick one or the other every time you want to use your thing. Um, artists have the kind of cool utility where they get to do both. They can damage buff and immediately drop a heal or the other way around. Um, that's fucking, that's fucking sick. That's incredible for both prog, for reclears, for, uh, helping your, the fucking goblins in your party. Um, the, the artist portal being able to use that to, to get past certain mechanics or, or help your, uh, slow DPS out of a bind. Again, fucking amazing. Especially with the changes recently, uh, with the damage buff being way bigger. It's... Uh, significantly more playable and desirable than it was before. I, I used to not want artists in my party just, well, when I'm playing anything other than, like, uh, Entropy, because if they're dropping, uh, damage buff pretty much anywhere other than the ass, I'm not fucking getting it. On top of all this, artists have this incredible knack for just being the best at being cringe. So... That also is another thing that they are best at that bumps them up into S tier. You know, they're, that's just, it's just all there is to it. Good stagger, good utility, stagger destruction. Um, easier to notice a bad bard than pally and artist. Yeah. So this, this is, this is all assuming that we're playing with the best players. I don't give a fuck if you're on bard, pally, or artist. If you're one of the best players, if you know that what the fuck is going on and you can execute almost flawlessly, what you're trying to do, I don't give a fuck what support you play, you're getting into my lobby. Unless, of course, you're playing an artist and I want to stay in Boundless. And, uh, someone else in my party- yeah. <laughs> Someone else in my party doesn't, uh, or does want the mana regen. That would be the only time that I would say that artists are, uh, not wanted. But, even then, you can mostly just mix up the groups or change tripods and, and fix the groups so one group is a no mana regen and the other group is a yes mana regen <laughs> okay next artillerist barrage these are our these are our crippled gamers these are the wheelchair boys um they sit still they tank everything they don't give a fuck their damage is insane their survivability is insane their stagger is insane their weak point now the destruction is is way better as well um, great utility, great damage, great survivability. The only thing that's putting them down here, as opposed to S tier, is I think they have less, a, a little bit lower of a ceiling, and obviously mobility issues. <laughs> Wheelchair only goes so fast. <laughs> Add a couple more wheels to that thing, and, and uh, maybe it gets bumped up here, but for now, that's where we're going. Easy. Next. Calm Overflow Summoner. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this class. I have never played with one and not let out an, a, a literal audible sigh when a Calm Overflow Summoner joins my lobby. They bring mana regen which Master Summoner also brings. I'm going to bump this up, by the way. I can't put Master Summoner in D tier. Honestly, I, I have to put this in D tier. I have to put Calm, Calm Overflow in D tier. I, I guess the utility is okay. Even, like, the utility on Master Summoner even is better. So, you like, there's no reason to play Calm Overflow for utility. I guess the only pro to Calm Overflow is that in prog, you can kind of focus on dodging a little bit more. And your pets are still doing at least a little bit of damage. I uh, I don't know. I I just I. 
When Summoner first came out, dude, I was so excited to play Calm Overflow. I was like, yes, I'm going to play a nice spammy class. It's going to be... It's going to be different than the other classes I've played. I'm going to have this army of pets. It's going to be fucking cool. I didn't last a day playing that before I gave up. I literally didn't last a day. That was the least fun I've ever had playing this game. I would love for a full-on rework so that the pets are actually cool, so that they actually do damage, so the build is actually viable. I just can't, man. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. This one's hard because I have not played with many BT Zerkers. Here's what I will say about BT Zerkers. First of all, they don't exist. Second of all, I, th I think they're just a worse Punisher. I think it's just a worse Punisher. It's an Ambush Master class now, isn't it? It's, ju it's just worse. It's also worse than AT. I'm going to stick it in here with Master Summoner. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, is that I've seen Master Summoners also pump. But it's it's so few and far between, but also it's so dependent on the group they're running with. Sure, a Master Summoner can cruel fighter. Sure, a BT Zerker can cruel fighter. But when they're up against an equally grouped, uh, equally geared group of players and skilled... I, I just, I don't, I, I guess I just don't have enough experience playing with BT Zerkers to have a, a full understanding of, of what its potential is. BT greater than Punisher. No, I don't think so, dude. I think Punisher is just better. I think Punisher is just better. Um, now, that being said, it's kind of tough because we're assuming damage ceiling. I've played with some Punishers that do some really good damage. But I think the problem with Punisher is that it's so dependent on both the raid and then also RNG and how much time you actually get to spend pumping your full rotation, your full burst rotation into the boss's ass before he does a fucking 20 degree turn and you miss 40%, 50%, 60% of your damage. So I can't put it in S. I... I don't even know if I can put it in A. I think I have to put Punisher in B. I think I have to throw it in B. Just because I think I think it's way too RNG and, and fight dependent. Sure, you can be fucking goaded at it, but consistency is uh it's it's gotta be at least a, a good amount RNG dependent here. Just based on patterns and shit. And also whether or not you're like in a fight where the boss can be taunted and you have a taunt in your raid or shit like that, you know? Too many variables. Too many variables. Hey, while we're at it, let's go ahead and take Rage Hammer and throw it into... Let's throw Rage Hammer in there as well. I haven't played with enough Gravity Training to know where they belong. I feel like Gravity Training's got to be in here with, with Master Summoner and BT, right? Gravity Training is technically better in terms of ceiling. I literally... I don't think I've played with a Gravity Training Destroyer since the changes. I watched someone play one on stream in Tree, maybe? And it looks way better than it was, but it's still like, this is one of those builds that just loses everything the second the boss moves. The second the boss starts moving around, it's over. And there's really not much you can do about it. It's the boss pattern ceiling. Yeah, there's just not, there's really not much you can do about it. You have to hit all of your, your you basically have to play the same as Rage Hammer. But then on top of that, you have to be able to stay in front and bonk the entire thing without the boss walking away or turning. It's just even more RNG dependent than Rage Hammer. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much damage you can do in Trixian. It matters how much damage you can do in a real raid situation. Like these classes up here, these DPS classes that are up here S tier, these guys have insane mobility and they're just on the boss fucking hitting no matter what. Some of these guys down here, it's like boss moves and it's GG for you. It's over. Where's first intent? This is first intent. I'm going to put first intent. I haven't seen enough, man. I feel like I haven't seen enough first intent war dancers. First intent brings really great synergies. That's a bonus. It's range. Even with the buffs, I'm pretty sure it's attack range is still fucking terrible, isn't it? You still got to be inside of the boss to deal damage compared to a lot of other classes. Mobility. Cool. Great. Uh, actual damage potential, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it in here with with AT and 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 Punisher. I do think I do think ESO outshines first intent right now. In my experience, 
I've seen the ESO war dancers pump more often than I've seen the first and 10 war dancers pump. Ooh, where's remaining energy? One of these is remaining energy. I don't remember which one it is. All right, remaining energy. I'll be honest, I haven't even fucking played with a remaining energy death blade. Surge is way fucking better. Like, period, right? Ari is at S tier? I, 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 again, if it was S tier, would there not be more people playing it? If it was S tier, there would be more people playing it. Period. They don't know yet. No, that's not true. Everybody knows. Everybody knew that Ari was getting huge fucking buffs before it came out, before the, the, before the changes were made. A bunch of people were talking about playing Ari. Then they tried it for fucking 10 seconds and decided they fucking hated it and they are going to play Surge instead. Okay, I'll, I will. I'm looking at the other classes in here. I'll put Ari above him. Firepower, Ari, you're next. I'll be honest. They got buffed. They got quote unquote fixed. They got helped. Uh, you're, you're going in here, dude. It's possible to see him do damage, but they just, they just... They just, dude, it's not with calm overflow. There's no way firepower is with fucking calm overflow. This class, this might actually be the only D tier fucking class in the game. I'm be honest. Arcana. They both have to go in S tier, right? This is the ceiling list. They both have to go in S tier. Insane potential, absolute pumpers. Stagger synergy is OP. Yeah, but Barrage also gets stagger synergy and it actually does damage. What do we got next? Uh, Igniter, you can go down here in D, get fucked. I don't even need to talk about that. I think we all know that that class is dog shit and uh, no one's ever doing damage in it. I'm just kidding. I'll put it in, uh, I think I'll put it in C. It's in C. It's not as bad as Calm Overflow. I've seen igniters actually kind of pop off. I still have literally never in my life seen a Calm Overflow summoner show up anywhere other than fucking fighter. It's just the way it is. It just is what it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in here. I'm gonna leave it in here with, with, uh, with summoner. I think Igniter and Summoner have a lot of the same issues right now. Reflux next. Reflux can have B tier. Reflux damage is way better than Igniter. It's not really anything to fucking brag to your friends about, but uh, definitely playable. Definitely has potential to cruel in the right group, and it's it brings pretty decent utility now. A rework for Sork and Summoner in the future? I would love a Gunslinger, a Summoner, and a Sork rework this year. Those would be the three classes that I think are uh most needing of a rework right now i think the ceiling for reflux is higher than igniter i think the realistic ceiling for reflux is higher than igniter more often in raids yes i think the biggest problem with igniter is that a good chunk of your damage is just just comes from fucking slamming your slamming your doomsday in that one second window that you have at the end of your igniter and you have not there's nothing you can fucking do about it if their if their boss is about to move, if the boss is about to like anything, if there's anything happening that does not guarantee that 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 doomsday is going to hit all of the time, then if you're sure if you're in Trixian, if you're fighting a target dummy, then yeah, Igniter can do way more damage. If you're fighting if you're fighting something aiming for for burst windows to push from mech to mech to mech, like old content, sure Igniter's better, but more consistently, in actual raids in a realistic scenario. With good players, I think Reflux is beating Igniter most of the time. Because it's impossible to guarantee that you're going to hit that Doomsday, that second Doomsday, all of the time. I mean, it's impossible to guarantee that you're hitting any of your skills all the time, but Reflux is just way more consistently able to do so. Okay, Full Moon. I feel like I'm going to give a biased answer for this. I'd be interested in if you guys think the same... If you, if you guys think the same that I do about this class, S. I very easily put this in S. Keep in mind, guys, that this is the list for the good players, the best players. This goes in S, but good full moon players are fucking pumping right now. There's a reason they just got nerfed. Barely, but there's a reason they just got nerfed. They're a good full moon player is fucking blasting. Best burst in the game. I don't know if it's as good as the other S tiers. I think a good full moon is doing just as much damage as a hunger reaper. I, I will agree that Full Moon does not go anywhere near S tier when we're talking about the average or worst player. I will agree there. I've seen a lot of Full Moon Soul Eaters do insane damage, but I've also seen some. I've seen way more Full Moon Soul Eaters do fucking terrible damage. I've seen some really bad Full Moon Soul Eaters. Yeah, same. I've seen some really fucking bad ones. Let me get these transform classes out of the way. 
I think the transform classes still have to go here, don't they? Both of them? Evo D tier? No, I, I, 11 times out of 10, I still take an Evo Scouter over a fucking CO Summoner. I take a fucking Demonic Impulse Shadow Hunter over a CO Summoner. Um, okay, Mayhem Zerker. Mayhem Zerker is going in B tier. Mayhem's going in B tier. It's a good class. It's solid. I'll invite him to raids. I'm going to pray they fucking know what they're doing. I also have seen a lot of really fucking bad Mayhem Zerkers. Pred is going in. I think Pred's going in A. Pred gets beaten by Knight's Edge, gets beaten by Surge, gets beaten by both Arcanas if they're better, gets beaten by uh, Full Moon. It's definitely in competition with these other A tier classes. It's definitely in competition with Barrage with uh iso after the rework with a really fucking good lunar reaper which one's pinnacle and which one's control i'll literally never fucking remember they why do they look exactly the same control is left pinnacle is right hmm this one's tough because i've seen control uh, control there's one control glaive in particular that i've seen that fucking pumps i feel like i put both glaive uh in a tier i also the other reason that i want to put control in a is just because of their fucking synergy, man. Like, the class just brings fucking bis synergy for everybody. Okay. This one's good. Wait. I already, I, already, I already forget which one's which. Did I fuck this up? Which one's which? The one at the top? This is Pinnacle, right? Pinnacle is the one jumping. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually never fucking see the difference. Sometimes... I even look at this one and I think it's one of the glaive specs. I uh, just, I don't get it. Oh, perfect suppression. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> I'm sure it's fun. This is hard for me to judge because I, ha I haven't played with enough of them. There's no way that, yeah, there's no way they have the same ceiling. This feels wrong. If, okay, if AT, if AT scouter is in B, then, then perfect suppression has to go in B, right? I think I'm leaving it in B. You guys can, you guys can like argue with it as much as you want. I just, I've never, I've never seen a uh, perfect suppression shadow hunter that has um, consistently surprised me with the amount of damage it did compared to these other classes and uh, keeping their amount of investment in the class and like their build versus the other classes builds in mind. You will see it when you merge with NA East. We got some some cracked PS Shadow Hunters. Wait, I'm already on NA East. When I merge with NA East? You mean two years ago? <laughs> All we have left is specific classes. Okay, we have Scrapper. I'm doing Scrapper first. Oh, this is hard. I Ty is still doing better than Shock. S tier easy. There's no way. A, on the other hand, A, I think I can agree with. A, I think I can agree with. Is shock ceiling higher? I don't know. Okay, I can put these in A. That's fine. Okay, um, gun lancer. Now, this one's hard because a good red gun lancer is fucking insane right now. They might not be doing the same damage as some of these classes, but with the synergy as well... It'd be really hard for me to justify putting this in with AT Scouter and, and Rage Hammer, and I think I have to put it in A. Blue, on the other hand, blue... Oh, blue's got to be, when played by the right person, just as good. Maybe not quite just as good. Fuck, I just don't see blues anymore. I just don't see blues anymore. They just don't exist. Oh, man, it's so tough because it obviously brings better party synergy than red. Insane stagger. It's got to be in there, right? Red has better synergy. Um, I mean, you could probably argue that red has more uptime on uh, back attack because of swift. Yes, but blue also has battlefield shield, which is kind of insane when used properly. Battlefield shield is fucking sick. Battlefield Shield is is one of the coolest fucking interactions in this game. Gun Lancer as a whole has some of the coolest interactions in this game. And more people should play Gun Lancers. I'm leaving Blue and A. You guys could disagree. But 
it, it's it's just got too much to bring to a to the table. This class is A tier. I'm putting time to hunt in C. I'm putting peacemaker in B. Uh I'm putting peacemaker in D. <laughs> I'm putting peacemaker in B. Um I'm putting peacemaker in C. Uh Nah, I'm putting peacemaker in B. Okay. Okay. I know we're all memeing on gunslingers right now and they're fu <laughs> 48 mil. <laughs> 48 mil on a 10 second cast. Okay, a really good gunslinger is still doing good damage. It's not fucking barrage damage. It's not fucking pred damage. It's not fucking pinnacle or tie or or uh nice edge or arcana damage. It's still good damage. Just like Zerker. It's still good damage when they're really fucking good. I've literally been playing gunslinger since day one. Gunslinger is my day one OG main. I still play it. It's still good enough, but it's not it's not what it could be or should be for the amount of fucking button presses that you have to do to deal damage on this class. It hasn't changed. Gunslinger's still fucking sweating her ass off the entire time, and it's just like, use your fucking consolation prize for being okay, good enough, and giving us crit synergy. It needs help. Time to hunt is going in C, lower than Peacemaker. Maybe time to hunt has a higher ceiling than, uh... Than, than Peacemaker. Maybe it does in KR. Um, I, quite frankly, I just, I don't think it, I don't think it's better. I don't think it's as good even, even in terms of like utility uh, and playability. And I just, I just can't, I can't put it in the same, I can't put Time to Hunt in the same, in the same spot as Peacemaker. Now, Pistolier on the other hand, uh, we can throw Pistolier in here for B. It's good. Kind of just the same thing right now. It's good. Enhanced Weapon, however... That shit's going on A. A good enhanced weapon player right now is doing some pretty fucking disgusting things. Some pretty disgusting things. I don't know if you guys have played with enhanced weapon dead eyes that are perma back attack uptime, perma crit sin uptime, good gems, good build. This class is good. There's like five of them total, like actual good enhanced weapon players. I agree. But the ones that are left are fucking, they're, they're doing very, 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 very good damage. Very respectable. It's definitely not on the same tier as some of these other classes that just are disgusting. But yeah. Next, Soul Fist, Energy Overflow, and Robust Spirit. This one's tough because I feel like... Energy Overflow has way better potential than Robust. I feel like a fuck a really fucking good EO Soulfist is doing some nasty things. I feel like a really good Robust Soulfist is doing some good things too, but there's only so much you can do with Robust. You can go into hype and you can fucking leave hype early. And those are your options. Now, EO, on the other hand, this class, especially with elixirs out now as well, I think, I think, yeah, I do think I have to put EO up here. I think a really good EO soul fist is top in the charts. Up there, right beside all these other fucking sweat lords. Except, except Knight's Edge. These guys can close their eyes and fucking top damage. And Robust is going in A. Robust is better than a lot of these classes in A. But it's definitely not as good as the classes in S. It's an A class. Oh, uh, let's check, let's get this let's get these little fucking ayiyas out of the way. Drizzle. Uh, I'm be honest. I don't think I've seen a drizzle do a whole lot of anything yet. It's got to be better than igniter, right? Nah, is it? Uh, is it better than igniter though? Yeah, I think we're gonna throw drizzle in there. It's better than calm overflow. I'm 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 confident in that. Um, wind fury. Oh, as much as I hate to say it, I do think Wind Fury is better than... It's not better than Barrage. It's not better than Ari. It's not better than Pred. Okay, I think I think I have to put it in B. I want it to be in B tier. I also just don't, like... I think it, it kind of just belongs with a lot of these other classes. I think it's just good. 
I don't think I've ever seen a Wind Fury fucking destroy everybody. A lot of these other classes that are in A and above, I've seen fucking destroy everybody. Okay, low companion sharpshooter, meh, meh, meh. Okay, fuck, it's like, eh, uh, this one's tough. Death Strike A, Loyal Companion C. Loyal Companion C. I, you know what? I do, I, I actually think, because I'm thinking about how much damage it can do, and I know its damage is good, but I just feel like there's not a whole lot to Loyal Companion that allows you to push the ceiling higher. That's a class that's going to be a lot higher on the next list. Death Strike is definitely an A. A good Death Strike player is fucking pumping right now. Okay, I don't even have to justify Death Strike. I mean, we can just throw Strikers in the dumpster, right? Nobody likes this class? You guys think they're A tier. I don't think I agree with that. After the buff, I just haven't seen enough of them. Nobody plays this class. Crit Sin and high damage. I think it's Crit Sin and okay damage, isn't it? I want to throw this into B. Okay, this one's tough. I, I don't play with enough Strikers these days to know. B tops, I'm, I think I'm throwing these both in B. I know their damage got a lot better, but I think, oh man, it's actually tough too because of the fucking card set bonus. Like a really good player is gonna play around the card set bonus and gain way more damage. Um, okay, Iso is going in B. Iso is definitely going in B. I don't, is Deathblow, is Deathblow beating Wind Fury and Zerker and Punisher and AT Scouter? consistently when they're both really good if they have card set their utility suddenly disappears <laughs> why because they're fucking gobbling all their damage they don't even touch the boss to try and save their procs all right i think this is it boys we're gonna take one last check through here and see if we want to move anything around okay now that we've kind of positioned some of the some of the later ones uh into certain things we can maybe move some stuff around now we're gonna start from we're gonna start from the bottom co summoner garbage throw it out doesn't exist honestly it brings negative utility like you might as well just play the other the other version the other version is just better like in every way all right master summoner is still not very good you get fucking animation locked way too often you're just like doing completely mediocre damage right now even when you're pumping great burst once every fucking five minutes and that's if the boss doesn't move for 15 seconds straight okay bt zerker i don't really have much to say about it these classes don't exist gravity training destroyer dude boss moves and it's over firepower already just play barrage uh, Igniter Sork, fucking rework this class, please, I beg you. Let me throw a second Doomsday when I want, and not just because I fucking have to, because I have one second left on my Igniter, and it just came off cooldown. Evo Scouter, uh, it's an Evo class. You know, what else can I say about it? Same with Demonic Impulse, what else can I say about it? Time to hunt Gunslinger, you're literally taking away my utility. I don't even know how much damage you're adding by taking away my utility, um, you are making it easier, sure, great, but, uh, any good player, I think, any really good player is going to prefer to play Peacemaker and probably do better on it, which is saying a lot because that class kind of sucks. Drizzle? I don't know what else to say, uh, other than lull. Low Companion Sharpshooter? Pretty average damage with not much of a ceiling. I don't think that dis I don't think that belongs anywhere other than in the low side of this list because... Like what, like really, what is your, what is your skill expression? you you run around and your bird does all your damage automatically. You don't even have to press buttons. What happens if you press buttons? Your bird stays out longer. Death blow. You know, it's, it's better than it was. If, if you asked me to make this list a month ago, I would have, I easily would have put death blow in C tier. Death blow and ESO. I think death blow and ESO are fairly close right now. I know death blow is doing more damage. I think, I think ESO is, uh, I don't think the damage is that much worse over time wind fury damage on wind fury is good utility on wind fury is good synergy on on wind fury is good but i think it could still be better it definitely can still be better it's getting outshined by a, a lot of classes a lot of the time when played by really good fucking players okay pistol ear 
it's just good. Like, it's really just good. That's all there is to it. Peacemaker is not very good, but when played by a very good player who's very sweaty and somehow manages to hit all of the back-loaded damage, um, then sure, it's good. It's just, again, it's just good. Perfect Suppression is just good. It's just fine. It's not... It's not better than any of these other classes up here, but it's not worse than these ones. We're okay with where it is, but we'll also take one. Control Glaive, I think has... Control Glaive has insane potential, but I think it's also very RNG-based. Like, you, ha you have to be able to have insane uptime on the boss. The boss, boss is moving too much or turning too much. Uh, you spend too much time spinning in circles or whatever. Okay, Mayhem Zerker, again, it's just good. I think it's... I, I would compare it probably similar to Wind Fury. It's just good. It doesn't have the highest ceiling in the world. But you also can tell the difference between a good one and a bad one, period. Reflux, same thing. You can definitely tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. It's way doing way more consistent damage than Igniter in 90% of content right now. The recent buffs have made its utility way better. The fucking counter, the uh, extra stagger, all that shit. I would, I, I would happily bring a Reflux Sork to pretty much any party. My only complaint is that I would rather have crit synergy, but... That's fine. First intent ward answer. There's my crit synergy. Damage fine. Damage good, I guess. Range kind of shit. Even after the buffs, range kind of shit. It's just good. The damage is great. Uh, I, again, I haven't really seen one surprise me yet. Change my mind. Change my mind. Join a raid and change my mind. That's all I'll say. Rage Hammer Destroyer is so fucking slow. The numbers are huge. I think in a fight where the boss doesn't fucking move, sure, it has great potential. But in an actual raid, like, good luck hitting your fucking skills. I don't know. The charge times are so long. I think they they uh, sped them up a little bit, but it's still there's only so much you can control. It doesn't matter how well you know the patterns. The pattern just is shorter than your charge time, and the boss is going to turn, and you miss your front attack. And the same thing happens with Punisher. That's why they're here. It's got insane potential on fights where the boss doesn't move and is completely predictable. Punisher, obviously, I mean, we've talked about this before. There's nothing worse than starting to charge up your, or st starting your burst rotation, starting to charge up your skills, and the boss turns 20 degrees, or jumps away, or even worse, jumps away and turns 180 degrees. Depending on what build you're playing, <laughs> You have, like, very little mobility to even get back to the ass. Huge potential in the right fights, but generally kind of just mid, I think. Yeah, change my mind. Come on, Punisher, change my mind. I'm, I'm always down. I'm always down for you guys to change my mind on these things. AT Scouter is good. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's good. That's all. Death Strike, insane potential. Huge numbers. Fairly straightforward, but... Again, you can definitely tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. Way higher ceiling than Loyal Companion, and also way, also way lower floor. Very good class. Very hard to miss your biggest damage skill. It's just a good class all around. Robust, very good damage, but when comparing it to EO, I just think that there's only so much that you can do and so much you can control in a fight with regards to your hype management, which is all of your damage. If you miss all of your hype, because you fucked something up, GG's. But when you're on, you're on, and you're doing damage, you're pumping. Again, just when compared to EO, I just, I don't think I can put them in the same, I can't put them in the same spot. I, I, I really good EO players, pretty sure a really good EO player is just beating a really good robust player most of the time. Maybe not all of the time, but I would say in more than 50% of, of situations in raid, raid encounters. Um, enhanced Weapon Deadeye. Okay, this class is so fucking good when it's played well. It's so fucking good when it's played well, but it's so fucking rare that you find one that plays it well. Find yourself an enhanced weapon Deadeye that surprises you and makes you want to make one. This class is insane. Nobody plays it though. Both Gunlancer specs are in here, mainly because their damage is very, very, very strong after the recent buffs, but also they just bring way better utility than every other fucking class in the game. Better synergies, better uh, stagger, better destruction, better blue, better uh, shielding. Like, even red has party shielding, support options. It's just good. Why try super hard when you can do less, when you can do less effort, get the same result as Pistolier? Yeah, I guess that's fair. I don't know. I just, next we got Scrappers. Both of them are in A tier. 
they're good. They're really good right now. One probably has a higher damage ceiling, but feels a little shittier to play than the other. But they're both, their damage is both very good right now. Recent buffs. Did Scrapper is good. Okay, next up is Pinnacle. I think you either love this class or you hate this class. It's got very high damage potential. But again, I think it's one of those, one of those classes you just need to know boss patterns on. The only reason Pinnacle is up here versus uh, a class that plays fairly similarly with back attacks and charged attacks like Punisher is because it has a ton of movement uh, to be able to keep you up there or back there or wherever you're trying to be. That's why it's here because it has consistent potential. Pred, I, everyone knows Pred's got fucking great potential all the time. Uh, it's a very simple, straightforward class. It's probably got a much lower ceiling than uh, some of these other classes, but way higher floor and just consistent damage. It's just good. I think everyone knows, everyone knows it. Pred's just good. It's just good right now. I don't know if it's going anywhere either. Make a Pred Slayer. Next up is remaining energy. I don't, I, I'm going to be honest. These classes don't exist, but the few that do who are really good are really good. It's got the mobility. It's got the uptime potential, uh, and it's got the numbers to prove it. Again, if you have hands. This is one of those classes where you got to <laughs> just fucking scour the deep corners of the internet to find one that's good. And when you do, you'll know it. Barrage Artie's up next. I don't have anything to say about this class. You guys don't. Everyone's seen them just sitting in their wheelchairs, blasting. The damage is insane right now. The utility is way better than it was. The survivability is crazy. This class is just in a really fucking good spot right now. It's in a really good, it's a really fucking good spot right now. I think the only reason it's not S tier is because they probably decided not to give it as much damage potential as some of these other classes because you just get to ignore so much of the fight a lot of the time. <laughs> just hop in turret and pop your shield and blast for a little while. It would be silly if a class that played the way that this class does had S tier potential. Okay, Issa War Dancer, obviously huge buffs recently. This class fucking pumps when you're good. The, uh, a good Issa War Dancer is fucking frying right now. I, the only reason I haven't put this class in S is because I personally haven't seen one that actually made my jaw drop but I know that it has insane potential. Uh, same with Lunar Reaper. I, I've played Lunar Reaper for a really long time. I know what kind of potential it has. I don't think I've gotten there yet myself. I do think I'm good, but I don't think I'm as good as I could be. In fact, I know I'm not as good as I could be. I've seen a couple Lunar Reapers that have made me go, oh shit, I need to go back and rethink the way that I'm playing because that makes me think that I'm fucking up what I'm doing a lot. Insane potential. Very, very, very high potential. Hunger probably arguably has more potential right now this class fucking can literally teleport to the boss's ass permanently over and over and over and over again with every skill if you're built properly your numbers are high your cooldowns are low the only downside of this class is how squishy it is but with all the mobility that you have a good hunger player is not not getting hit that's it period um all three supports obviously are in s tier they're all great every support when played by a good player there's no reason to not take a support just because of what class it is uh, they're all fucking S tier. They're all good. Okay, where do we where do we get to? Oh, EO. I already talked about EO. This class is insane. Full Moon. Uh, I've seen some really fucking bad Full Moon soul, soul Eaters, but the good ones are blasting. They're insane. Arcana, obviously. Some of the highest damage ceiling in the game, both specs, but you gotta be fucking insane to be doing it. S what is this? This is Surge. Surge Deathblade. Crazy damage. Very easily belongs in S tier when in the right hands. Probably one of the highest damage potential in the game right now. Um, again, when played really well. I don't know what else to say. Class is just insane. They they really, really... <laughs> they really did a number on this class uh, with the recent buffs. Went from seeing none of them to all of them. Uh, and then lastly, everyone's favorite new class, the Knight's Edge Soul Eater. I don't know if I've ever seen a Knight's Edge Soul Eater do nothing. I'm pretty sure you can press every button out of order on this class and still do mediocre or better damage. I also know that if you are doing things right and your build is put together properly, this class is probably most consistently dusting every other class in the game. I don't think it has the damage potential. A perfect Knight's Edge player compared to some of these other S tier classes, maybe even compared to some of these A tier classes, arguably. However, it is 
probably the most consistently top performing class in the game right now. And with that, I will not be moving any of these things around. I'm leaving it here. I thought about it for a second, but no, it's staying there. And that's it. Hope this helps anyone who is trying to decide which class to play next. If you agree with any of this list, hit the thumbs up. And if you disagree, well, you can scroll down to the comments section and then shove your opinions up your own Thanks for watching. Give him, give him a thumbs up. Give him, give him a thumbs up.